Howdy. This video is going to talk about parenting in Unreal. Um, and depending on your programming uh, background or your experience with Unreal, you may or may not have ever uh, attempted or touched this, uh, but it's an extremely powerful feature and is extremely valuable uh, for any time you have uh, anything more than just a very basic project. Uh, so parenting uh, comes from C++ and it deals with inheritance. And inheritance is one of the most powerful things that uh, any object-oriented programming language has uh, where you can make yourself a class, uh, a very basic class, and then you can make a new class that inherits the functionality and features of its previous class. Um, and this is why and it's called parenting because we can basically think of a parent blueprint uh, as passing on the knowledge and the, uh, the abilities it's gained to its child. But uh, its child is still allowed to grow up, uh, learn new things, and uh, continue on. But anything it, it, it learns or, uh, or changes won't affect the parent. Only the parents can affect their children. So diving into how to actually do it in Unreal, um, let's take a look at um, a general blueprint class uh, basic asset, uh, and we'll take a look at this pick parent class. So you people have probably uh, gone through this, and you go through this, and you always like, oh, I want an actor, I want a pawn, or I want a character. Maybe you've even done some of the more, you know, like player controller, or even, you know, grabbed yourself like a different one here for some specific case from some tutorial you've watched. Well, in our case, we're actually going to be making a, we're going to actually be picking a class that we actually make ourselves. Um, because this is where we're actually deciding what we want to inherit as far as functionality. So our base class is going to be an actor. Um, and so we'll make this uh, the most basic of base classes. And we'll just name this one the parent class. And what we'll do is we'll make, we'll use, uh, we'll use a, uh, a trigger volume uh, to kind of just see how this is, how this is changing and getting affected. So I'm going to open up my parent class blueprint here. I'm going to add myself a collision box. I'm going to go over to my event graph, and I'm going to drag in an on event, on component begin overlap. And when this gets overlapped, I want this to uh, print a string that tells me I am parent. So hello, I am parent. Very simple. We will drag a copy of this parent class into the world. I'm going to increase the scale of the of the uh, the collision box just a little bit, so it's a little bit easier to hit. And I will position him at the bottom of the stairs, just so he's easy to find. If I hit play, I can walk through this thing, and in the upper left, I will see "Hello, I am parent." So, fairly basic. Um, so here's where the fun tricks begin. With inheritance we can first inherit, but secondly, we can override. So let's take as an example here, let's take this parent class. We'll make, our, we'll make a new blueprint class. Now, instead of selecting actor or pawn or something like that, we're gonna actually search for our class that we made. We're gonna search for parent class. So there it is, and I selected it, and now I have a, par and I have a new blueprint, and I'm gonna name it child class. So this is going to be the child, just as an example. And we, if we go in here, we can actually see who its parent is. Parent class is parent class. So it's the one we just made. Um, and you'll see on the left-hand side here, we have inherited our box volume. If I go into the construction script, or I say the event uh, graph, we'll see that we have some interesting stuff here, like we have a parent begin play, and we have all this other stuff. And if we wanted to, we could tell it, I don't actually want to, you know, trigger what my parents do. I don't want to, I don't want to do what they did in their life. I'm going to do something completely new and rebellious. Or we can leave it connected. It doesn't really matter. Um, what we want to do is we actually want to override one of our functions. So we want to grab, let's see, so we're going to override and actor begin, actor begin overlap. Uh... Not that one. I think it's this one. I think we can just grab this guy. So I'm going to grab on component begin overlap. 
I'm actually going to delete that real quick. Uh, I'm not going to compile this. Uh, I'm going to drag this into the world just so we can test this and we can see what's happening initially. So I haven't changed anything here. In fact, just to make sure we're 100% that we haven't changed anything, I'm going to delete that class uh, and quickly remake it. So blueprint class parent class child. Oops. Doesn't like that name, maybe? I think the naming convention got a little bit confused. Parent class. Name it child, child class. All right, here we go. I'll put him at the top of the stairs. Also increase his size, a little easier to hit. Now if I save this and play, so there's the there's the parent. I go over the child. Let's, let's clear, let, let me let those clear out, and we can see again. Hello, I am parent. So I'm triggering triggering the child at the top of the class. I uh, try at the top of the stairs, but he is still saying hello, I am parent. So let's change that. So we'll go into our child class, and we will grab our box inherited, and then I will grab my uncomponent begin overlap, and we will do print string hello, I am child. Compile. Now if I play, ta-da! It says, I am child. So let's talk about what just happened there, because it's actually quite, a, quite interesting. Um, before I added this function in, uh, this, this, fu this function here, it was telling us, I am parent. That was because this didn't exist. In this, this basically, since this was not here, we were using our parent's version of that function call. By adding it in ourselves, we are able to override it. You can actually override, you can see here, here we have 21 overridable functions. Um, anything from begin play, you know, destroyed. Um, I can even make a custom function. Uh, I probably won't call it, but we can make it. So if I make a custom function here, add custom event, and I name this um, trigger me. If I were to trigger this thing, for example, on you know maybe maybe on begin play or something like that, uh, to print print string parent in play. Trigger me. Compile that. I can hit play. Parent in play triggers. And you'll notice it, it triggered twice because the child has a version of that too. So right there is the other important thing with inheritance. By modifying the parent class, I automatically granted new abilities to the child class. So right here we have a parent class, our child class, and you'll notice that 21, if you were watching beforehand, became 22. And I can now override trigger me. I can get the trigger me event function here. Now, it will still trigger, but I can I can tell it to say something else. I can tell it to say child in play. And if I it'll it'll still be triggered because it's that function is being triggered in the parent. I can actually double click here. And it should take me. It's supposed to take me there. This is not but it's, it's triggered here, it'll trigger in the child as well because it's part of its begin play. So if I hit play again, child in play, parent in play. Oops, and I because I unplugged it. Print string, hello, I am child. So we've just seen we've just seen examples of uh, 
I created a parent class that has some kind of a functionality, be an overlap or a triggered uh, custom event that says something. And then I not only did I change what that triggered event will do in the child by overriding the uh, the function call, basically by by creating it here and connecting something to it, I'm indicating I want to use this version rather than my parents. Uh, I also showed that uh, we can create after the fact any changes we make here can propagate to the child. Just because it doesn't exist now, like so now I've deleted that on my child end, the parent class still has it. So I can still I can still hit play now, parent and play, twice. Hello, I'm parent. However, if I control Z to do event trigger me, and then see compile that, and I will get rid of it from the parent class. And it's going to yell at me if I don't get rid of that. And I can go ahead and play now. And you'll notice that nothing happened because I didn't actually specifically tell it to trigger to trigger me to call trigger me here in the child by deleting that in the parent um, I lost it in the child so now I can compile it and you're angry at me because it's renamed it to trigger me one Now if I hit play, again, child in play. But the parent didn't inherit that. So again, parenting goes from parent to child. Anything added to the child cannot affect the parent. So that's the basics of uh, parenting. There's a lot more you can do with it, but this is just kind of like a, a quick introduction uh, that it exists and it's worth, it's definitely worth looking into.